uh, Committee, Center for Gender Studies Committee, I say you are welcome. Our students, you are highly welcome to be a part of this program. What are we talking about? We are talking about gender-based violence, like one author rightly mentioned. It's a long-standing phenomenon, a long-standing problem that all families, relationships, all bringing of children, destinies, we want to look at the roots of this abuse, the impacts on adolescents and how to mitigate them. When I talk about the violence, it's not just the female gender. We have cases because of the violence that ensued in some homes, children have suffered from any marriages, low self-esteem, poor academic performance, even mental incoherence. As you are seated here, I want to assure you irrespective of any family circles that you are being brought up. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 He said the Lord is able who will give you what? All grace, enablement, wisdom, knowledge that you may abound into every good work. Lastly, I want you to have your pen and paper when the lectures will be going on from our guest speaker and our co-speaker write down your points it's going to be interactive hello thereafter you can ask your questions once more gender-based violence has become a big problem that is only when we discuss it that we know the impacts and how to come out of it. I will indulge your presence, your attention, so that at the end of this program, all of us will be parted positively in Jesus' name. Once more, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. that welcome address. I would like to now humbly invite the Vice Chancellor's representative for the Vice Chancellor's remark. Please let's put our hands together for <laughs> Dr. M. Hem. We hope you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Paula to reserve. It's a pleasure to stand before this English audience to represent our Vice Chancellor, Professor Elijah Um He has sent his message, a good message to all of us that it will be well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to um, read the brief speech that I've been prepared for this purpose while I want to establish the protocol that need to be accomplished. The proprietor and the visitor of the Montington University, Professor D.K. Lukoya, the Vice Chancellor of Montington University, of whom has standing prose, Professor Elijah Ayolabi, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Akinomi John, all the principal officers in attendance, from the Registrar, Mr. Olufemi, to the University of Liberia, Dr. Mrs. Deli and Kinabe. Deans of colleges, CHNS, Professor Walter Deoli in absentia, 
Dean of Sivas, Dr. Andrew Fuji in absentia, Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Olani Kwekunjo in absentia, all the HOD and coordinator of program present in this program, Director of Gender Studies, Dr. Nelly Indikwe, Director of Units present in our midst, guest speaker, Mrs. Titi Lola Adeniji, um, the co guest speaker, Barista Mrs. Ivan Evelyn, all the academic staff in attendance, distinguished students of Modern Top University, gentlemen of press, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great joy in my heart and immense gratitude to God Most High that I welcome you all to this year's edition of Modern Top University 2023 Gender Week with the team. Gender-based violence, a long-standing phenomenon against humanity. As you may all be aware, the issue of gender-based violence is a monster that has pervaded and corroded virtually every segment of society without an exception. And as the Vice Chancellor of this university, I am glad to tell this distinguished audience that the choosing topic is not only topical for this purpose, but also very apt and timely to the need of our society. Gender-based violence is one of the most pervasive violations of human rights in the world, one of the least prosecuted crimes, and one of the greatest threats to lasting peace and development. It should be remembered that the joy and excitement of many activists, member state representatives and professionals that have been working assiduously in this area of gender-based violence is highly significant and commendable. This marked a, a breaking point where after many years of struggle, we could finally place our hope in a legally binding and far-reaching tool to combat violence against men and women, and particularly the children. We all know that we have to do much more to respond to the cry for justice of women and children who have suffered violence, we have to do much more to end these horrible abuses and impunity that allow this human rights violation to continue. We all recognize how significant this moment was for women and children experiencing gender based violence. We finally had detailed guidance on how to create a holistic system that will fully protect children and bring us one step closer to defending their pain and suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, it should be noted, however, that this violence against men and children has tremendous cost to the communities, to the nations, and to the society, particularly for the public well-being, health and safety, and for school achievement, productivity, law enforcement, and public programs and budgets. If left unaddressed, this human rights are able post serious consequences for current and future generations and for effort to ensure peace and security, to reduce poverty and to achieve sustainable development goals and the next generation of development goals we are discussing today. The effect of violence and remain with women and children for a lifetime and can pass from one generation to another. Studies have however shown that children who have witnessed or been subjected to violence are more likely to become victims or abusers themselves. Violence against women and men is an extreme manifestation of gender inequality and systematic gender based discrimination. However, the right of women and children to live free of violence depends upon the protection and their human rights and the strong change of justice. Furthermore, it should be recalled that at the global level of the United Nations, women are advocated for the stand long goal on gender equality, women's rights and women's empowerment, and separate and complemented gender equality mentioned across all goals. This is needed to address the structural foundation of gender-based 
inequality. So this is that we are calling for the new framework to tackle three core areas, namely the number one safety, number two assets, and number three voice, so that women can live free of violence and enjoy equal access of opportunities and resources and expect their voice in leadership and participation. On the final note, we need to also say at this junction that there has been a universal general call for gender equality. We therefore admonish everyone, everyone, including the academia, the religious organization, the industrialist, the, the elite, the old and the poor, the children and the teenagers, to mention a few of them, that we should all rise up from now onward to say no to gender-based violence in all our education. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to invite the representative of the guest lecturer, Mrs. Titi Lola Baibo Adeniyi.